guys, how's it going? And today I need to do some maintenance in our raised bed vegetable garden area, which is right behind me. I also wanna give you a tour of just how things are going in that spot. I mean, it's been so hot for so long and things are still looking really good. And I'm so thankful for this area because it's an area that's finished. You know, we have a lot of projects going on. Um, this area always kind of has a very organized look to it ish so first off just point of reference you can see the barn we're on the west side of the house here it's morning time so everything's fairly shaded well kind of shaded on this side vegetable garden though i mean you can see it's just usually most of it's in the sun for most of the day uh, which is i think why the vegetables do so well in this spot so i just pulled my gator right up to the edge here so one of the first things we're going to do you can see that the colette roses are just wild. I have not been keeping up on pruning, so we need to come in, kind of shear them up a little bit, make it to where you know you can actually walk through without getting snagged by a rose cane. But if we tuck ourselves under here, quick overview of the space in here. We have four three by four raised beds, four three by six raised beds, and then in the center, we have four L-shaped beds, which the ed ends are three feet and the long runs are six feet, just to give you an idea. Uh, we just recently put that container in here. It's all on drip. I have not watered that one single time uh, and it's looking great. But you can see that, you know, the space is being utilized pretty heavily at the moment, which is what we want in August. And I'm really happy with it. Let's walk this way. There are some out of control things going on though, like tomatoes, basil that needs to be uh, pruned back big time. And then this Colette right here is even more wild. Like I haven't even been walking through this area for a while, clearly. And it is putting on new blooms. Gorgeous, gorgeous climbing rose. And we've got a clematis kind of creeping its way in. Need to train that one up onto the fence. Hydrangea standard right on the outside. This is a limelight hydrangea that gets full sun. Uh, we were having some watering issues earlier. We took care of that though. So we had a little bit of burnage. <laughs> burnage, is that a word? We had a little bit of leaf burning going on earlier, but that's been fixed and everything looks much better. And there is one on the other side too that's actually much bigger. But here's a view from the other side here. Just kind of walk down this way. Really, really happy with it right now. And the corn has stayed upright after I staked it. We have had a couple of windstorms since the one that took our spruce tree out, but they weren't as severe, but the corn stayed up. So I'm thankful for that. And that's pretty much it. Oh, I got a big weed right there. Okay, so we're just gonna go bed by bed. I'll talk about what's in these, what I've planted in them earlier, if I can remember. <laughs> My years kind of go together in this space. I don't know if you guys get that way, but I'm like, didn't I plant that crop earlier this spring? Nope, that was two years ago, you know. Before we get started, let me show you what I've got in terms of tools. Uh, I usually carry a jar or some kind of uh, watertight vessel in case I wanna cut flowers. I won't probably be doing that today. I've got a pair of Falcos here, and then I've got my kangaroo uh, pop-up bag, or three, <laughs> back here. Isn't this awesome that they just fold down to this size? Let me pop this up real quick. Just takes up so much less room. And voila, I will be using this heavily. And then whatever we harvest today, I'll be putting in this trug right here, which is super handy. Like that. I'm guessing beans, peppers, and tomatoes today. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is start in with the climbing rose so that we can get in and out easy. First off, decided to tackle the Colette climbing rose on the arbor leading into the vegetable garden so that we could get in and out. I needed to go back and forth to get, you know, puppet bags and, and what have you, my water bottle from the gator, and I wanted to be able to go in and out of the garden easily. Such a satisfying job, you guys, just to lighten the load of that rose canopy. It inevitably led to trimming some of the instant karma elderberry right to the left of the arbor. It has some long reaching arms that that you had to brush against when you walk down the walkway. So it felt good to kind of get that under control as well. I had to get the step ladder out just for the top canes, most of which I just kind of trimmed up uh, flush with where the leaf canopy was more dense. But a few of them I did fold back down into the arbor because I do want it to be a complete arbor of roses in the end. And I think by doing this severe, it's kind of a severe prune really, it kind of looks that way anyway. Um, but by doing this, really big prune right now it will encourage new growth which it's early enough in the season to do that and we'll have another crop of 
beautiful roses before we have frost. So I'm looking forward to that because they are gorgeous roses. They did beautifully for us this spring after I trimmed them back really hard this past winter. The next thing I tackled was a pot of chives right inside the vegetable garden, which just looked crummy. And you know, I've had those chives in that pot for three to four seasons. It's probably four seasons. And I thought, well, no doubt they're root bound. I'm gonna have to replace them or, or pot them up into something larger. But after I got done cutting them back, I realized that the soil felt really dry. And this pot is connected to our drip system and the zone it's connected into runs every day. So Aaron got that zone running and we realized that the emitter was plugged. I cut the um, drip tube while the zone was running and sure enough, water came shooting out. So I replaced the emitter, we got it running again. So those chives will probably come back really happy. I went ahead and gave it some garden tone while I was at it, just to give it a little bit of kickstart with some nutrients. The first raised bed that I worked in really didn't have much going on in it. I had uh, onions early on, some Walla Walla onions that I started from seed. We just harvested those recently. I also had a huge uh, volunteer sunflower come up in that bed and it fell over, broke off in a windstorm. So we got that cleaned out. I've since put, there are some buried treasure strawberries in there, but I put some marigolds and some dusty miller in there just for a really fun, you know, late summer, fall color. And we'll just let that bed kind of be. I added some garden tone, watered it in, added garden tone to the boxwood as well. In the next raised bed, I actually had anemones planted in here. We planted them early on this season. You might remember when we pre-soaked them, the corms got them planted and they came up beautifully. I had a pastel mix and a white with black eye, I think. I can't remember if that's the exact name, but it was a beautiful bed full of flowers. We enjoyed those a lot. When we pulled those out to save the corms when the plants were done, I planted some clary sage from seed. I did not realize that the drip tubing was not working at the time I seeded, so it came up a little spotty. It came up great in the areas that were receiving water. Of course, it didn't come up as well in areas that were dry, so I ended up popping some marigolds in there just in the empty spaces, and I think the bed looks full and beautiful. And clary sage is a really wonderful uh, cut flower. It's a really good filler flower, very muted colors, just really pretty and the pollinators love it. Also gave that bed and boxwood some garden tone, got it watered in, so we should be good to go in that space. In the next bed, which is a three foot by six foot, I have a few rows of glass gem corn, which I'm so incredibly excited about. I've never grown this variety and they produce the most gorgeous colored kernels. So the ears will range in size from three to eight inches and then the colors on, the, on each ear can range from like a navy blue to a periwinkle, green, yellow, red, orange, white purple. I mean, just absolutely gorgeous. And you can use them for decorating, which is how I'm going to probably use them. Or you can use them for popcorn or you can grind them into cornmeal. Anyway, this glass gem corn was planted after we pulled our ranunculus, which were a phenomenal crop for us this year. The ab absolutely glorious color, um, great cut flowers, really enjoyed, have enjoyed this bed all season long. In the next three foot by six foot bed, I have two garden treasure tomatoes, which have been producing like crazy. I've obviously not been pruning them. They are just absolutely <laughs> massive. So what I did today is I didn't really go in to prune to, you know, incre increase productivity. I don't really actually think that I need to do that for productivity because of how many tomatoes we're getting. I did that merely just to lighten the load around the outer parts so we could really maneuver around the bed. It was getting kind of hard to walk around it. So I was able to just harvest a few tomatoes off of that those plants today. I've been harvesting though almost every day um, because we've been eating a lot of the tomatoes inside. So I just got a handful off of those plants. I did plant some Cracker Jack marigolds around, or no, I planted petite marigolds around the base of the tomatoes. They're popping out here and there um, with a flower or two, but I think the tomatoes have just overtaken them. Before I planted these tomatoes, I had bulbs in this bed and it didn't go super well. They came up and then they just really petered out without blooming a whole lot or the blooms were really short. I do not think that they got one, a cold enough winter and I don't think they got enough water throughout the winter. So we learned something there. So in the first L-shaped bed, we've got some zeal Lights calendula planted on one side uh, and this is where I had garlic earlier on this season when I pulled the garlic I planted these calendula from seed and they're just starting to bloom you can see I have a celosia plant kind of popping 
in the front area there looking really pretty in red. I just left it because I think it'll be a pretty color. Uh, but calendula is a wonderful plant because you can do all kinds of stuff with it. I mean, edible flowers. I made calendula salve last year. Uh, they're also an aphid attractor, which may or may not be a benefit, but in my garden, I feel like it is. They don't, don't have any aphids currently, but if there's gonna be an aphid problem, they will find your calendula and they'll leave all of your actual fruit producing plants alone, which I really appreciate. They're a really good companion plant that way. The rest of this bed, I have two garden gem tomatoes that I started from seed. I planted them really late this season and they were still really small when I planted them. And I put two stakes in the ground, uh, intending to keep these more as a single trunk type tomato plant and keep them very heavily pruned. And obviously I let those go as well. So today I cut a whole bunch of uh, big branches off of them, cut them down to pretty much one main stem and got them all lashed up to their stake. So we should be good to go there. And I think the beans will be happier. I planted a, a crop of beans around the exterior and they're just starting to bloom and they'll just start setting beans here really soon. So they have some more room to grow. I had red cabbage, the Ruby Perfection, in this side of the bed this spring and they were beautiful. Weird though, they produced huge plants with just kind of little heads of cabbage. And the next L-shaped bed, I've got several different things. I've got nine hot and heavy peppers, which are just, I've got a whole bunch of ripe ones on there and they're just loaded. There's a whole bunch of peppers on these plants. I also have dill, which you can see kind of popping up through the obelisk, that self-seeded from last year. Uh, and it's just starting to dry out enough to where I'm gonna start gathering seeds on that one. I've also got a couple of good-hearted tomatoes that I tucked in the edge of that bed and one of them they both look really good but one of them in particular has a ton of tomatoes on it and those good-hearted ones they grow like 8 to 10 inches or 8 to 12 inches tall and wide really tiny tomato plants that produce a ton of fruit so they're really good to tuck in like this or to put in hanging baskets that sort of thing in the other side of the bed I have some uh, nasturtiums I uh, can't remember what kinds. There was a peach color and a dark colored one, and they haven't come up that great. I'm kind of coming to the conclusion that I need to start nasturtiums inside. I just continually have spotty luck direct seeding them, so I may not do that. And I've tried soaking, pre-soaking the seeds and not pre-soaking the seeds, and I kind of have the same luck. So anyway, I've got nasturtiums and marigolds on that other side. I went ahead and fertilized the whole bed as I did with the prior couple that I forgot to mention anyway, and got it all watered in. In the next L-shaped bed, I pretty much just have flowers at this point. It's gonna be beautiful. It already is. I've got a couple different varieties of marigold, like a standard kind of variety, and then Cracker Jack, which will be a lot taller and then the whole thing is surrounded with dusty miller and then right there by the obelisk i have some misty is it mystic lavender misty lavender dahlias which have their very dark colored leaves and the beautiful single dahlia uh, flowers that are lavender color before i had flowers in this bed i had garlic and copenhagen market cabbage which both did really well in this space so i got this one uh, fertilized and watered in and the last l-shaped bed in the center there i have a lot of stuff going on you can see i've got onions in there that are there from last fall so that'll probably be the next thing i pull uh, in order to plant some new things for for this fall i've also got some danvers half long carrots which they're doing great i never thinned them and so some of them are a little wonky shaped but some a lot of them are really nice they're like perfect shaped carrots along the back side of that bed right behind the onions i have uh, detroit golden beets and uh, i'm not ready to harvest all of them i just kind of harvest them as we use them so i just grabbed a few today really so i could show you what they look like we'll probably roast them up for dinner tonight the next three by six raised bed on the other side of the garden we have jade beans and i planted i believe four rows four rows of jade beans in there and it's just it's full um, they're kind of cascading over the sides creating this mass but jades are a really wonderful variety they're a 53 to 55 day bean uh, very tender typically even when they're older which i picked some that were a little bit more on the mature side and they keep their tenderness for a lot longer than other beans typically they're about six to seven inches long or so and a lot of the time they stay uh, more on the straight side which which is really nice because if you're wanting to do say dilly beans like my mom and I just can not long ago um, it's nice to have beans that you can slide easily into jars without trying to bend them you know because some of them curl up a little bit um, but they're wonderful now you might remember this is the bed that I have or had soil heat cables buried in and I grew lettuce all winter long in the, and spinach in this raised bed and it was a 
just a huge success. Everything did really well in that area. In the three by four raised bed right next to the beans, I had Walla Walla onions planted in there this spring. Once we harvested those, I decided to plant a new kind of pumpkin to me called Cinnamon Girl, which I love that name. The shape of these pumpkins are so cute. They're like three to six pounds, rounded, very thick stems, and I guess they're a fall favorite uh, to use in any kind of pumpkin-based recipe. So pies, breads, muffins, all those sorts of things. Um, and they're an 85 day. So they're a fairly short day pumpkin and I planted them I think early enough to where we're going to be able to see some of those pumpkins come off those vines. And the other nice thing about this variety is that you don't need as much space for the vines on this one. You only need to space them out roughly two to three feet uh, because it's a much more compact growing plant. So it's great for growing in a space like this and I just really wanted to test that out. So I got both the bean bed and the pumpkin bed fertilized and watered in as well as the boxwood there. In the last three by six bed, I have two garden gem tomatoes in that one, which are different from the garden treasure in that they are more of a snacker size tomato, kind of Roma shaped, uh, and they are heavily productive. I've picked so many tomatoes off these plants and they have an heirloom taste. So I love that they come in a smaller package so that they mature a lot faster and a lot earlier and they're much more meaty um, than a regular type tomato and I really appreciate that in a tomato. I did not prune on these at all because they have so many fruit set all over on these plants, like all over on all of the branches that I didn't want to sacrifice any of that fruit. So I didn't, I stayed away with, from those plants with my pruners. Um, I also do have some marigolds planted in this bed around the edges, which you can see a little bit better in this situation. But going forward, if I'm not going to prune my tomatoes, I just know that I can't really get away with planting anything close by because they will get smothered. And in our very last raised bed for today, three by four size, I've got six amazel basil plants planted in this space and they grow absolutely massive. The wonderful thing about a mazel basil, the, which I really like, is that they I, they just started blooming. So, I mean, we're right getting close to the, not end of the season, but like mid to last part of the season. Um, usually my other types of basils have been blooming for a long time. So these create a little less maintenance for me. They also don't change flavor when they start to bloom. You know, some of them get really intense or they get a little bit more bitter. Um, they just get kind of off from their normal flavor once they start to bloom. A Basil doesn't do that. Um, so I really appreciate that in a plant. So I got these all cut back, all the blooms cut off of them. So we'll get some more time out of them. And lastly, the Colette Rose on the far side of the garden, which I think was even more mangy than the first one. Um, this one I cut back pretty hard. Uh, I probably could have got away with cutting a little less back, but I just kind of started getting into it. And really, I really wanted to take a year to shape these up a little bit nicer than I have before. And I let them get a little out of control. And I think that, you know, pruning them back as hard as I did this winter benefited them really greatly. And I think we're going to have maybe next year, we'll have a complete arb coverage from these roses, which is so exciting. But now you can access the garden from both sides in and out. So nice. And everything has been maintained. I'm loving it. It looks so much better in here. I mean, just right from the gate, right here, this rose on the arbor, the rose is no longer choking the view. And that's something that I just need to be a little bit more diligent about either training the rose canes uh, through that arbor or keeping them trimmed up. But I think we'll see a big flush of blooms here soon. Let's take a quick walk uh, back through the garden space and then I'll show you everything we picked today. I love how the arbor just frames this area. I like the view with the weeping willow and the container there. I was noticing, I think we're gonna have to do some staining this winter or like early spring, just when the roses don't have the leaf canopy on them, uh, just to keep it nice and sharp. I was noticing it was really worn off of the fence caps. And I don't mind that look. I like kind of a worn look in the garden, but I also like it to be sharp. So either way, one thing I did not do in today's video, obviously, is I did not address this limelight standard. So we had a lot of rain a day, like last week, I think we had a lot of rain in a really short amount of time and it just weighed down all these branches. They're not used to that sort of weather. Um, and because I, I uh, trim this back so hard, I think I might just kind of like weave some uh, twine around in there and kind of draw it all back up so that we can enjoy these blooms. And they're not just, you know, weighed down here. Like if we can bring that back up, that would look way better. So I think I might do that. We unearthed quite a few tomatoes. I mean, I knew these plants were loaded, uh, but it was fun to see how many we're gonna be able to enjoy here really soon. 
And, you know, I didn't even realize how big those tomatoes had gotten. They were just so thick in there, and we really need to give the new crop of beans room to breathe as well. And it was fun the other night. I just, I picked up a couple flats of marigolds, and everywhere that I had a little hole, I just popped a marigold in its spot. And it really, it brightened things up quite a lot. I love it. Didn't have to do anything to this container. You know, the lavender is still thriving in here. That's the perennial that I was worried would just start to rot, honestly. I thought it was gonna be way too much water, but you can still see that the leaves look really healthy. The blooms have faded a bit, um, but I expected that. I'm just happy that the plant looks good. The next thing to come out of this garden space will probably be the onions. I'll pull all the onions and then we'll get something else going in here. And these beans have just been so productive. Um, I did plant a whole bunch of new beans out in the garden space, the cut flower garden, a whole bunch. So when these start to look really tired, I'll probably pull them in favor of something that's a little tidier. That looks better, not having the basil hanging over the edges. And then there's our second rose. I really took that one down. I think I, I, <laughs> I didn't over prune. I don't know that you could over prune a rose, but oh my goodness, it was so out of control. I think I just went to town. I was kind of enjoying myself cutting, cutting it and like kind of freeing the walkway finally. And then I tucked the clematis up around the fence pickets and it just was easy. I just was able to slip the vine over one of the pickets and it just held it right up there. And I don't remember the variety of this one, but I love how the blooms look like little skirts, like little ballerina skirts. So cute. And here is the view from the other direction. I just love this space so much. It's so fun because everything, like with the gravel, it looks really tidy, yet I can still have all this stuff kind of spilling over the edge. It's just a really fun space. And I do like, you know, when we put in this brick walkway, I was really having a hard time trying to decide whether or not to go straight or to try to curve it. And I think we went with the right we made the right decision because it's too narrow of a space to try to make a curvy pathway and it really draws you down. Like I really, I don't know, I'm really happy with this whole area. Love the urns. Looks like Aaron went through and cut some arbs. He's just like gradually trimming the arbs up a bit. Okay, now let's go look at the harvest. So here it is along with some of Benjamin's tools here. So we've got some garden treasure tomatoes right there that were just buried in that huge dense canopy. So I'm excited about those. Uh, garden gems, which is one of my favorite flavored tomatoes actually. They are so, so good. They taste like an heirloom type tomato in this just really nice kind of Roma size. So they're nice and meaty, which I really, really like. Uh, we got some hot and heavy peppers there. There's a ton on the plants. These are the ones that were ripe. Uh, I pulled a few carrots. I actually have no need for carrots right away. I'll probably try to figure out what to cook with them tomorrow. But I just wanted to show you what was underneath that dense foliage canopy. Also, same with beets. We'll probably roast up these few beets tonight. Some of them are a little bit getting a little bit old, so I'll have to peel them pretty good. And then we have jade beans. There's a whole bunch in this tub right here, just a whole bunch. Some of them are a little bit bigger like this. Usually I favor more slender beans like, let's see, something like this, just something that's a little more tender. Uh, but we'll figure out something really good. I might freeze some of these. This morning, Erin was asking me about that garden space and wondering what, uh, what it would be like if I just grew edibles, like nothing but edibles in there. And I cannot even imagine a space where I didn't tuck some flowers. I think adding the flowers in that space is such a fun, it's a fun feel. It makes it a more colorful one. And it just, I don't know, it brings just another element into that space. And we still get a ton of production out of those raised beds. Um, I mean, we had spring crops in there. Uh, we have the summer crops, of course, and then we'll be able to still have some of the greens. I think I was gonna plant greens out in the cut flower garden, but I think what I'll do is I'll pull the beans, the onions, and I'll just relieve a couple of those beds for spinach and lettuce and things like that. We don't eat a tremendous amount of greens. So I think doing it, those in raised beds closer to the kitchen makes more sense than having to haul all the way out there to the cut flower garden to pick a few handfuls of greens for dinner. So anyway, super happy with what we got done today. I mean, it is a warm day. Again, we're right in the middle of another heat wave, 106 today. Um, it looks like another four or five days of that. And who knows? I mean, that just keeps everything chugging along and growing and producing. So I'm not going to complain. I think it's, it's good. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching today's video. Hope you're having a great day and we will see you in the next one. Bye.